this is music. Certainly better than what my dickless neighbour plays. I play this. My neighbour plays. I play this. We got some Neighbor plays. I play this. Turn that noise down. I turn that noise down. I can't stand that horrible row. Turn that noise down. My neighbor plays. Yep. My neighbour has no dick. Well, actually he does, it's just not between his legs where you'd normally find one. Well, hello there, and welcome to another episode of Coulter Clem's Electronic Workshop. And today, what we're going to do is another video about audio. Well, it's time to break... Time to break out the old BSR record changer with its ceramic cartridge because I want to try a circuit that I found on the internet where I can connect a ceramic cartridge up to a magnetic phono preamp input. That's right, you're not going crazy. You did hear that correctly. So this first circuit is nothing to do with connecting up to a magnetic cartridge input. That's just a little something I want to try. And as this original circuit involves tubes, as you can see right at the end there, guess what I'm going to be doing? Next one is the circuit to connect it to a magnetic cartridge input. Need a magnetic cartridge preamp, so... I think this one will do. Well, enough about that. Let's do this. Now there's one problem with trying to prototype a tube circuit on a breadboard and that is there's no way you can put a tube. So this is what I've come up with. Yep. Just, um, yeah. Just put a bunch of connecting wires on this tube. Now I know what some of you are saying. When this thing gets hot, these bits of mains cord that I've used to clip the wires onto the tube pins are going to melt. i got to remember, this is just a prototype, so it doesn't matter. And besides, this isn't going to be on long enough for that to actually happen anyway, so... i better come up with a circuit and then, um, stuff. Alright, I've used my brains, which a lot of people don't think I seem to have. Now I'm just going to go through... I'm just going to walk through one half of the circuit because they're both assigned... they're both the same. I've got one side for left and one side for right. So we have the input coming in from the cartridge, going through the resistors and capacitors, well, resistors and capacitor, and that goes into this tube, or valve, I've got it set up this way because it doesn't really need to amplify, and then we're taking the signal from the cathode, feeding it into this op amp just to buffer it a little bit because tubes are high impedance devices, and because we're basically buffering a DC signal, there's no need to bias the op amp or anything like that, so it'll just be connected like that. This 12 volt Zener diode is to protect it from any high voltage spikes that we might get out of the tube, and then of course this end goes to the amplifier. Now at this point I don't actually know what voltage we're gonna get out of the um out of the cathode when there's no signal, so I'm going to have to experiment with that. But anyway, let's do some experiments. Well, a contraption is slowly emerging on the breadboard. Let me just talk you through what I've done so far. So yeah, I've put the tube on. And as I don't have any 600 picofarad capacitors, I mislabeled those as 680 picofarad, but they're actually supposed to be 600 picofarads. I've just put a couple of 330 picofarad capacitors in parallel. Yeah, I know that's 660 picofarads, but that's about as close as I can get. So, we'll just have to go with that. 
Also, as I don't have any 3.3 mega ohm resistors, I come up with this thing. Anyway, what I need to do now is fire this up, find out what voltage I'm getting out of the cathode, and we'll see where we go from there. Alright, but before I do any of that, I want to make sure that the high voltage power supply is working. And yes, I know this isn't the best kind of wire to use for a high voltage power supply, but that's what I put in there. Let's switch this on and see if it works. Let's see, is that coming up? Okay. Let's see what voltage we've got on the multimeter. Still climbing. We should have about 300 volts when this is fully warmed up. I don't know why the other camera is still rolling, but uh. Oh yes, so I can film me turning it off. Okay, it seems to have been, seems to uh, be, well, five minutes later. Well, seems to be petering out now at about 296 volts, 297. So I'm gonna say this works. I'm gonna turn this off. And yeah. Okay, so we know the high voltage is working. Let's see if this tube will light up. Got it connected to my power supply, set to about 12 volts. Let's see. Not seeing any glow. Oh wait, there it comes. Filaments are kind of tucked away on this tube, so it's a little bit difficult to see, but yeah. Could just about make out a glow there. If I turn out the lights, we can see it a little better. So we've got a low voltage, and we've got a high voltage. Let's put them together. Okay then, let's see what voltage we get out of the cathode. So, turning on the low voltage. Two minutes later. Now get over to the high voltage, and if something starts smoking or the tube starts red plating, I'll know I've cocked up somewhere. So, because of where I'm sitting right now, it would be better to prop the multimeter up so I can actually see the numbers. Right, turning on the high voltage and of course got to wait for that to warm up too. Okay, we're starting to get a little bit of voltage. And we have about 3.2 volts, alright, so we've got about 3.2 volts at cathode A, and now we do nothing, because my wire is not connected very good, right, 3.2 volts at cathode A, let's check cathode B, let's see what we got there, we should have about the same, So with no signal going in, we've got about 3 volts at each cathode. Okay, so I've now gone and changed those two, um, 22, ohm, 22 kilo ohm resistors for 47 kilo ohm resistors because, you know, I thought they might be pulling the voltage down a bit too much. I mean, really, we should have about 6 volts at the cathode and we we're only having about 3, so... I think that's going to be a much better option, and also that's not going to limit the tube's output so much, as it's not loading down the tube so much. So, I'll turn on the high voltage. And wait for that to come up, and let's see what voltage we get. Of course, it would help if the meter was on 
voltage instead of ohms. That I think you know that helps when you're trying to measure voltages. Let's see what we got here. I'm still on about 3.4 volts. I guess that's about the most we're gonna get. Well, it should be good enough for what we're gonna do anyway. Well, there's quite a contraption on this breadboard now. So let me walk you through it. Well, you've already you already know about this part. So I've added the I've added the op amp. As you can see, under this capacitor, and that's going to be powered off the same power supply as the filaments. And I've also connected the high voltage power supply ground to the uh, um, negative of the op amp. You know, which is the same as the power supply for the fil filament. Yeah, that was probably a terrible description of this circuit, but anyway, I'm gonna wire it up and yeah, let's see if it works. No, there is nothing wrong with your picture. This is the only way I could put it in. So that's why it's in upside down. Anyway, I've got this all wired up and I just want to make sure that I'm getting voltage out of the op amps. Now if you remember, it's about three and a half volts or so, so uh, I'll turn the high voltage on, so we've actually got high voltage going through this tube. And we'll see if we get our like three volts or so. Getting out the op amp. Now somehow we've got 13 volts there and I haven't even turned the high voltage on yet. I've turned it on now, but uh, let's see. Okay, yep. Okay, about 3.4 volts there. Let's just wait for the high tension to come up to its full potential. So that's about where I'm expecting it to be. Let's check the other output. It should be about the same. If I can get my wire in there, of course. About 3.3 volts. Well, that's about the same. Because I've got this op amp set up as a buffer, so there's no voltage amplification, so whatever comes out of the tube is going to come out of the op amp. Alright, so that all seems to be working, so I'm now going to connect up this to that, and we'll see what we get. Better turn the high voltage off first. Well, this is all powered up, and I can say it definitely does work. I'll just give the record a little bit of a spin here. I haven't actually got this plugged in at the moment, but... Trouble is... It's over driving the computer's line input. So, yeah, we're going to have to come up with... Well, I say we, I mean I. Going to have to come up with some kind of attenuator circuit, but... It's passing a signal. And that's a good thing. Okay, so I think it's time for a sound test. So, I'm going to play... 30 seconds of three records. Of course, I have no idea how safe they are to play on YouTube, but there you go. So this is playing, um, this record player playing through this contraption and playing into the computer's line inputs. <laughs>
single word You say you've changed your mind Oh baby, that's unkind Well, I don't know about you, but that doesn't actually sound too bad. Anyway, before we move on to the next circuit, let's just do a full rundown of um, this and its power supply. So here we have the ceramic cartridge to line input circuit using tubes and op amps. It's pretty much the same as you saw earlier except I didn't use a Zener diode because there just didn't seem to be any need for it. And because the output was a little bit stronger than what I thought it would be, I've just added a couple of resistors on each channel to tame it a little bit. And this is the way it was powered up. So, as you know, I was powering the op amp and the tubes filament from my bench power supply, and this is basically the schematic of that bench power supply. I'm not going to bother explaining it, it is all my own design, but there's another video about that on my channel somewhere, so uh, so there's that, and of course the power supply for the tube. So we've got a transformer with 210 volts output and 6 volts output, so the 6 volts powers the filament and the 210 volts goes through the tube, so it's rectified. And that's smoothed by this capacitor, and then this inductor and this other capacitor do additional smoothing. And, yeah, that's about it, really. Not uncommon to use this kind of power su um, filtering. Even switch mode power supplies use that, only on a much smaller scale, of course. Anyway, enough about that, because it's time to try out the Velocitizer, or Velocitizer, whatever. It's time to try out this circuit. I can see how this works. So, basically, we have a voltage divider between here and these resistors here which lowers the output voltage so it's much more suitable for a magnetic phono preamp input. And with this capacitor we get a little bit of equalization. Now, I'm a little bit concerned that with these low resistor values it might load down the cartridge a bit too much and not let the base frequencies get through, but we'll see. Okay, well, it's time to test out the um, um, yeah, this preamp and the uh, velocitizer circuits. I've got absolutely no idea how this is going to sound. It might sound like absolute crap. It might sound really good. I just don't know. So yes, I've managed to get all those other wires off this thing and uh, some jumpers on here, which I'm just leaving in their default positions because I don't know what they do and I don't want to muck about with those in case I mess something up and cannot get it back to how it's supposed to be, so, yeah. But wait, I hear you ask, how am I powering this thing? Well, connected to the motor, I've got this transformer, and that's on the same switch as the motor, you cannot really see it, but when this is turning, this transformer also gets power, and this outputs about 19 volts AC, of course, I've got no idea what these numbers on this transformer mean, because it's all in Russian. This must be a really old transformer, because it says CCCP. And because this appears to have a rectifier and all the components in it to turn that into a dual rail power supply, well, I can just connect this transformer straight up to it and power it that way. So that would give us about 24 volts per rail, and these things that look like transistors, they're actually positive and negative voltage regulators for about 15 volts, plus and minus. Well, let's see if this thing works. I've got it all hooked up. I'll make the record player play itself. Is it going to drop the needle in the right place? It doesn't, but never mind. Yeah, that's working. That sounds pretty good to me. It's only coming out through this little speaker of mine, so you're not hearing the full fidelity of it. Now, if I put this onto 12, that'll start the record at the right place. I don't even know what the first song on this is. In 
enough waffle, let's see our direct hookup. Although this one, in my opinion, did sound better than the one that was connected to the tube buffer that had a bit more bass on it, this one really brought out the high-end detail that I just didn't hear with the other circuits, so it's hard to say. And that particular cartridge that I'm using doesn't really have much bass on it to begin with. I mean, the original Crosley cartridge that I had in there did actually produce bass a lot better than this one does, but... I don't have that anymore, so I'm not able to test that. And the needle was pretty worn on it, so... If I ever track down an original BSR cartridge, I'm going to stick that in there, and that's going to sound really good. As long as it's still in good condition, of course. But what I'm going to do now, um, although I'm not going to do it now, because the video's getting too long, I'm going to experiment with this a little more, change a few of the component values around, see what works best. And, well, I think that's about it for now, so until next time, goodbye.